I'm Susan Israel, and I'm here in the Hapgood Wright Woods in Concord, Massachusetts with Art Ramble 2020. I'm the curator, and the exhibition this year is Water Change, where spirit, nature, and civilization meet. Every year, the, uh, the Umbrella does an exhibition in, in the woods, and the theme that they had in mind, part of an ongoing program, is water this year. And all of my work is climate change and art and design and, and how we can use art to change the culture and engage people around climate change issues to make them understand the urgency of the climate crisis and engage people enough to hopefully get them to act in whatever way they can. Um, and so the exhibition is in the woods and we sent a call out to the artists uh, the diversity of the work and the quality of the work is extraordinary. I'm really thrilled that every artist engaged very deeply with the topic and in very different ways. And they each brought something of themselves and from outside the world to the exhibition, which enriches the, the entire exhibition overall. The faucet. When the lake dried up, we prayed for winter. We prayed for winter but it did not come. It did not come, spring run off. The trees cracked, the sap stuck, the tap bone dry. Hi, I'm, I'm Linda Hoffman. This is uh, the faucet. Um, I guess I just wanna first say water, um, the importance of water is dear to my heart. Um, I mean, there are the figures like one in seven people in the world today, so a billion people don't have access to fresh water. And um, this piece came from, it was an, inspired by a site where, this is 30 years ago, we took our children, they were fairly young, to Indonesia. I spent a lot of time in third world countries because my mother was an anthropologist and I wanted my kids to have that same experience, even a, a little bit of it. And we went to an island. I didn't really know much about what we were going to see that felt like we were in a refugee camp. And there were just people everywhere, sitting, hungry, with, with practically nothing. The sun was beating and there was a faucet and the faucet was a little lower. It was a faucet, but it dripped water. That was it. That was the access to fresh water for all of these people. So there is a pot under it always to collect the drops. And I guess I just was, I've never forgotten that. And so that was really the inspiration for the faucet. And then when I came here with Susan and saw the, you know, kind of saw the site, I thought, well, maybe it would be nice to have a few more pieces related. And so that's how these other pieces um, came to be. This one, no water, no food. The bowl is usually empty. There's a tiny bit of water in it. Um, over here is the well is dry and this is Pray prayer for rain, for rain. <laughs> and um, I love also I do this a lot make small bronze figures and put them with found objects and in the landscape and I feel like that is in part this um, a way of expressing that we are very small and we think we are so big and important, but in terms of the landscape and the earth, you know, we are small. So with that, I'll end. <laughs> thank you all. And So um, thank you for the opportunity to show this in its second iteration. It actually grew a little. Um, my first thought about these was in terms of passage. And uh, actually, I guess this is the third. Uh, my first uh, thought of these was in passage. And the boat throughout history, whether it's Greek history going across the River Styx or 
current history coming from uh, across the Mediterranean and bringing immigrants. The boat speaks to me. These are made from screening and they obviously cannot hold a physical being in the water. And yet they invoke the thought of transport. Um, the colors come from the flag, the rainbow flag. And the black that got introduced this year came from a story by Ekla Holmes that was uh, illustrated by Ekla Holmes that was called Black is the Color of the Rainbow. And I just thought that was, it's a beautiful story. I thought that was very um, poignant. They are hanging so that no, you cannot, um, you can't go anywhere. And yet they relate to the water, which is close. Um, I, I am very concerned about the migration and immigration that is going on now, but it actually, again, is a worldwide historical phenomenon. And in our time now, it has really come to the forefront prior to the climate. Uh, issue that's going on with fires and everything else. I think um, it's meant to make you quietly think of what's going on. And I have to say, I love the poem that was written. And if I may, I would like to just read the poem, which is gently, sound wisdom, a round wisdom, a child receives like baptism from her mother. Thank you. Um, I'm Liz Helfer. Um, when I was creating this, this is actually two pieces that came out of a much larger vignette of characters, which I know Janet has seen and Linda has seen because they were part of the Riverway uh, exhibition at Studios Without Walls this year. But I pulled the two birds out because they felt like they should be here and not there. <laughs> um, and. Part of that was that when I started setting everything up during the process of this, um, I really loved how the lines came together in their frames. And it was sort of unintentional. I actually had a, a different orientation for all the creatures originally. Um, but the entire piece is about how we have a lot of nature in our background. We don't think about how we impact it. Actually, I think this group probably does think about how they impact it a lot more than most people. <laughs> um, but it's made out of windshield glass, broken windshields. And it really, I think that material speaks to a literal impact, human impact, and how we really just do barrel ahead and run over everything in our paths most of the time. Um, but I think that this actually ended up being fairly humorous. It was like a little duck, a little goose, and they have a nice conversation right by their pretty little pond. Um, and I actually see this happening a lot right outside of my studio, which is at my home, just right on the Charles River. And uh, the geese come in. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> they agree. And uh, so, although I think it has a really heavy um, environmental uh, connotations, I think that it ends up being sort of more lighthearted. And I, I appreciate that too in most artwork. <laughs> uh, my name is Bill Turville. Uh, I did three pieces really, uh, this bench and two chairs in three different locations, all made out of found wood of various sorts. This is a sculpture that I've been kind of messing with, frankly, for a long time. I decided to just chop it in two to make the legs of the bench. Um, three boards are three very old oak boards that I've been collecting. I collect wood things. Um, and the whole point of using wood, frankly, uh, is that trees basically are giant water pumps. And that fits the theme as well as the fact that my thought was that most people come to this area or any open space, natural area, in nice weather. Well, this is a wonderful day to be in the woods. On a rainy day, they go home and they read a book, or play video games, whatever. So I'm trying to encourage people to come to this location, these three locations, or those benches, or anywhere else, and experience the woods in the rain, or the snow, or the fog. And uh, I've been here in a lot of different 
you know, types of environments. And um, the woods change a lot in the rain. And you begin to realize that there's rain is integral to what we're seeing here. Rain is also where, if there is any water, where's Linda? If there is any water, that's probably where it's going to come from. Even even to replenish all the groundwater and the lakes and rivers and streams. So come here, sit on these locations, and enjoy the rain when, or the snow, or the mist uh, when it's here. And also listen really, really carefully because right now we have a lot of noise of various sorts. It changes when the woods are filled with water. So uh, listen and uh, enjoy the rain here as water. That's it. I'll probably make a little statement about each piece and why it is what it is, but that's sort of the overview. And I really like, I really like the poem that was written. It's a terrific poem. It's actually far more emotional than the sorts of focus I had in here. I was thinking environment and what I care about, but she brought a whole different level of emotion to the, to the installation. Thank you. Um, this is my piece. It's, it's 16 pieces. Uh, it's called, I always want to say Fire and Rain from the James Taylor song just shows that the words are common and, and important. Uh, it's called Rain and Fire. Um, it's 16 pieces. There are nine sort of water drops, rain drops, and seven sort of fire elements, semi-abstract drops. And they're uh, scattered, suspended all of them by fishing line on either side of the trail for about 100 feet. Um, they're solid oak. Um, they came from remnants of a recycled, recycled from remnants of a building of a two-story uh, woodworking studio, which I now share, um, that a fellow built years ago. So there's kind of a nice little uh, synergy there. Um, so um, I sort of got some of the inspiration from having these neat pieces of tapered wood that I could use and then adding the fishing line. Um, I didn't know that they were gonna spin at all. Um, you know, you sort of think of things suspended, usually a swing. It must be the uh, weight of the uh, solid oak and then the fishing line on it. But it's a neat little element, I think. Sort of gives it a, a dance sort of quality and a little uh, dervish-like quality. Um, I didn't realize it would be quite so uh, cataclysmically appropriate right now with the fire and the rain. Um, I always look at the New York Times um, online homepage. And last night, you know, the two main articles were the flooding and the raging hurricanes in Florida and Alabama and the fires out west. And now we look up and you can see the uh, hazy sky that's not clouds in case anyone thinks they are. You know, it's about 16,000 feet up, someone told me. It's that smoke from uh, the west coast, 3,100 miles away. Um, so unfortunately, we have an imbalance now, the two. Um, I tried to make a feeling of balance too. You know, you, you, we should have life nurturing water and the heat and warmth of the sun. And when it gets out of balance, for various reasons, a lot of them human um, generated, you end up with catastrophic flooding and fires. And by the way, not only in California, and, and Oregon and Washington, but in Indonesia right now, Brazil, Argentina, Siberia, and Australia. And it's been going on for several years now. And, you know, you can debate the reasons, but it's there. And uh, I did want to make it aesthetic though, and something attractive and the balance between these two sort of elemental forces. Thank you. So uh, once again, I'm Bill Turville and this is, uh the second of the three pieces. Um, this happens to be facing not toward the water. This faces toward this gully, which was probably made by water. Um, I like the view through here, this giant tree pumping water up 100 feet or so. And uh, again, made of uh, found wood, but plus uh, an old salvaged, actually overstuffed chair frame.
they're really rough underneath. They're beautiful and they're all pulsars, but they're usually terrible looking underneath. Um, but the, again, it's found wood. This is spelt, spalted maple. These are from pallets. I use pallets, some natural branches, which actually I was lucky enough to get a small pickup truck load for free. Unbelievable. Somebody said, now you're a rich man. I said, yes, I am. I'm rich in branches. Um, various woods. The white ones are maple. This is unstripped maple. There's some sycamore in there, uh, some oak. So again, a lot of wood in a different environment to experience where we are when it's wet. So enjoy, sit down, rest, relax quietly. Hopefully nobody walks by with 12 dogs yapping at each other, but it'll be fine. Thank you. My name is Ann Alexander. I'm a sculptor from Wyndham, Maine. I um, work in wood, stone, and clay as mediums for my work. This piece is carved out of a cedar log, and the title is Seminal Pull. Seminal uh, means derived from a seed, and it also refers to new original ideas. I usually work with purity of form, but decided to add the detail of the climbing snake or vine-like form which surrounds the piece. It gives it another sense of, of moving upwards. And wouldn't it be nice if we could climb up this piece like Jack and the Beanstalk into a new, better, uh, pollution-free world? All right, I'm Madeline Lord, and this is um, Swan Lake, which started with this handle from an old refrigerator that, remember, you opened it and then it broke the seal and pulled the heavy, fat door open so you could go in and get what you needed, often with a chunk of ice below. And it, to me, it looked like the nose of a swan. And then, having gone to many ballets as a child in Pittsburgh and watched all the Margot Fontaine movies, I loved the drama, the romance, the tragedy, the magic, the evil empire, and all the things that would happen and when I saw Swan Lake and played the music to myself all the time, I couldn't decide if I liked the swan or the princess. The swan by day would swim on the lake of tears. And the dance of the swans was beautiful and the music is beautiful. But at night she was a princess and that's when Siegfried saw her and fell in love with her. And after a, a little triangulation because of the evil sorcerer, he ends up with Odette the princess, which to me is the tragedy because then she's no longer a swan. <laughs> In this piece, it's the emergence between forms and it was ideal for welding a ballerina's toe to a plate because with a web foot, it really could stand up. But thank you for accepting it in the water show because it really in my mind plays with all the ballet magic and theater and transformance around water. This whole story evolves where water is a lake of tears and it has inklings of tragedy, but, you know, little beams of hope and then eventually a romantic happy ending. So it's a very successful ballet. And um, here she is in the woods and this is a lovely spot. Thank you, Susan. For, we agreed that this this um, cathedral stand of trees in a row kind of looks like a ballet set. The scrims that would pretend enormous spaces, but they were just painted veils. And um, so it's a playful location for the, for the piece and it's a beautiful woods. Thank you. So I'm Rebecca McGee-Tuck, and this is Mara Terre Venta at Vento, and, um, which means um, sea, earth, and wind in Italian. Um, my family, half my family is Italian and um, Parlo Italiano. And when I got the call for this um, art ramble, we were right, it was like February, right when Italy was going through the super quarantine and everybody, people I knew were stuck in their houses for weeks. 
and not leaving. Um, and we're learning about how it spread and how to keep ourselves clean and wear masks. So when we got the call, when I saw the call for this, I was thinking about water and climate change and how to keep people, keep the climate safe and wearing a mask we found was keeping us safe. Er, and um, so I decided to make masks for the earth and the wind and the sea, uh, protection masks. And uh, I, luckily during quarantine, I have a welding set up in my garage and um, I was able to plasma cut and weld in my garage. And then I had a lot of time on my hands as we all did to, um, to work on them, which was nice. And I always think of sculpture as finished when it has a fiber element to it. And I really love the way they blow in the wind overlooking the water, especially that uh, VCR tape that's on the bottom, <laughs> which is really cool. But um, yeah, that's Mara Terrapin. Hello again uh, for number three. Uh, again, another place to sit, enjoy the changes in the pond, enjoy the changes in the weather. This was built from scratch um, out of the twig that I had assembled in my own studio and then got through this large buckload of twigs. Again, a mixture of wood, uh, natural wood and found wood, maple, sycamore, oak, a little bit of birch. And um, again, people can sit and enjoy the, the uh, environment in general, or the view in particular. So uh, hopefully people will come back when it is moist and enjoy it. Um, one thing that the seats don't drain, so I bring something to like wipe the seat off or rub it or something. I didn't think <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Israel, and this piece is Migration. It actually originated before the Art Ramble. I was in the woods and I was trying to envision how you would show that forest and plants and everything that we consider rooted and fixed in a location is slowly moving because of climate change. So uh, as many as half of the species will become extinct in the next 50 years and a significant number of species of all kinds will move, whether it's plants or bugs or animals or humans. We might see as many as a billion people migrate across the, the planet. Uh, due to too much water, too little water, and primarily too much heat. So I wanted to express that, but as in all of my work, I try to do something which will allow people to stop and reflect and not hit them over the head with the message immediately because then everybody shuts down and nobody really wants to think about it. So I'm hoping that this is a little bit humorous and this idea of the trees kind of picking up their stuff and marching off to a new location is just a little bit bizarre looking, but then people will get the double entendre of seeing people moving through the woods as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Migration. If only they could move faster. The birches, the evergreens, the maples, the ashes, the oaks, the firs. If only they could pack the essentials heft, heartwood, a great purpose, traveling quickly westward toward wetter climes, northward toward cooler, swift as ghosts, as mercury on the wing. Well, I'm Laurie Bogdan. And I'm Kimberly Harding, and this is our piece, Confluence. And Confluence is our representation of the Sudbury, Assabet, and Concord rivers, which actually come together as a confluence right here in Concord at Egg Rock. And we are showing how the river system was impacted by the textile industry and other industries as they dumped, as you can see on this side, the textiles. Um, on the bottom, mercury in the Sudbury River. Mm -hmm. And on the side, it's um, climate impact, which we still have these days. So in the center section, we show the healthy part of the river because local people have done a lot to make it cleaner 
And there's various wildlife in there, which was made from uh, Tyvek and sewn and stuffed to represent the wildlife in the area. Um, the materials that we used were made from uh, collected plastics from our community and they were fused together to create this material and then Kimberly and I took it all together and wove it into the base which is <laughs> the base is made um, with a technique called spraying, um, which involves interlinking these long, long cords. They were 59 feet each um, when they started. <laughs> now it's 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, to create this open mesh. And I wanted to include uh, bubbles to, you know, again, evoke the, the sense of water. So mm -hmm. that's why it has a lacy. Mm -hmm. bubbly uh, parts in the, uh, in the background. Yeah. And our piece, our hope with this piece is that we'll inspire people to, um, you know, again, continue to come together and work towards uh, maintaining and improving this river system, which is a, is a local treasure. And uh, we hope that people will be inspired to do that. Mm -hmm. Hidden right down there is a great blue heron, if you haven't noticed her. Yeah. Sitting in her nest, woven by Kimberly. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Confluence. Come together beyond the many obstacles. Come together, an undeniable force. Wend through valleys, astride mountains, aside a ridge, a range. The mineral history of one meeting the mineral history of another, culminating in a why. The cutting, the biting, the falls, the great heights, how ends become beginnings, the aerial view, beautiful. A blue meeting a brown, a brown meeting a green, a green, a white, a yellow, a gray, though distinctions may remain for a length in the main, as if even rivers can be unsure of a common cause. Then rush gives way to one's strength, one strain, one purpose, one nature, a linking, a baptism, one name. The exhibition is open now and it will be here until November 8th. So I invite you to come see it.